And without further ado, let's get into the fights. To start the 271 main card this weekend, we have Nazara Hapkarist versus Bobby Green. One thing you all should know about this whole fucking main card is it's full of fucking bangers. We're going to get it into it right now. Nazara coming at a solid 13 and 4, coming off a loss versus Dan the Hangman Hooker. Uh, Nazara is coming at 5'10 with a 72 inch reach. And on the other side, you got the journeyman, but he's about to fucking action. Bobby Green, one of my favorite fighters. He's coming off a win. He uh, He's coming at 5'10 with the same one inch reach. These guys statistically um, off their physical traits match up perfectly. But boy, Zach, you tell me this is going to be a fucking banger of a fight. I think these guys are going to stand in the pocket. They're going to fucking throw. But I don't know about you. But I think it's a pretty easy one for one of them. Interesting. Because I feel like I'm taking the opposite take here. I'm taking Bobby Green. I think Bobby has the boxing. He's tough, dude. He's all about the action. He'll stand there. And the fact that he went three rounds with Rafael Fazeev last year and didn't get hit. I mean, he got hit, of course. But he really dodged a lot of punches and... Nazarat, he likes to load up and throw one big punch. He very rarely throws combos unless it's there and it's open. So that's kind of my take on it. Well, look, I'm banking the opposite. You know, I'm banking on Nazarat taking what he learned from Dan Hooker, who treated him like a son. You know, Nazarat is Dan Hooker's son now. Dan Hooker walked him like a dog last fight, but, uh, you know, I think he took some lessons out of that, and he's still a young fighter. He's still growing and adapting, which, you know, obviously Bobby Green is. We're seeing a resurgence in his career. This is his 41st professional fight. You know, MMA Twitter has adopted him as their own. He's growing this massive fan base, and I just think it's quite strange because there's just no realistic picture where Bobby Green fights for the title at 155. But anyway, my, my whole point is that I think – Nasrat kind of learned his lesson about being gun shy. And in this fight with Bobby Green, the only way he's going to win it and what I'm banking on here is volume. I'm banking on seeing more combinations. And, you know, Bobby Green uses that Philly shell defense, the Floyd Mayweather defense with the shoulder roll. And, you know, the Nasrat's only chance is to throw three or four or five punches because that's the only way he's going to catch Bobby Green's head out of position. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think Nasrat has the power to do it. However, I just don't think he's going to be able to do it. I think Bobby Green's reflexes probably set him apart more than most. I mean, I think, especially in that Rafael Fazeev. Rafael Fazeev is an absolute savage. And it took him almost three rounds to start catching him clean after he threw about, you know, 150 punches. So, and he also threw a hell of a lot of leg strikes to slow Bobby Green down. So, I mean... I also like Bobby Green's style. I mean, I'm a fan. He's 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 about the fucking action. There's nothing more to it than that. Um, but he I wants think, to be there. That's a fact. I think one of the things that makes me optimistic about betting against him is he's got some sneaky, like some slick wrestling. He gets guys down occasionally, but it's not, you know, a part of his main arsenal. So I think the ground game will be pretty minimal, like you said at the beginning. I think they're going to stand and trade, and then I don't think either guy is going to get the other one out of there. I think we see 15 minutes here, and I think it's going to come down to who's in better shape, and at that point, I'm taking the younger fighter. You know, fair enough. But interesting enough, if you go to UFC or uh, ESPN's fight page and look at their fight center, they list Bobby Green as a jiu-jitsu fighter. And I haven't watched enough of his fights to know if he's a jiu-jitsu fighter or not. But still, it's interesting to know. But like I said, I think I think Nazarat just loads up too much. And, she, and he's overhyped, and he has an inflated record. If you go to his record and you look, he has like nine KOs in a row. But they're, they're in the minor leagues. It's like hitting a, 100 home runs in the minor leagues. That doesn't count. That's not a record until you get to the major leagues. And he's lost two of his four or five fights in the UFC, one being to Drew Dober where he got KO'd and one to uh, 
Dan Hooker, where Dan Hooker made him his kid. Now, those are two high level fighters, and those are nobody else that he's fought has been a high level fighter. However, both those guys lost to Islam Mahachev in the past year. So, I mean, you never really know. But no, I'm I going with that... the experience, even though Bobby Green's 35, we have a 42 year old light, uh, light heavyweight champion. So, age is really not that much of a factor. Shout out Tom Brady, uh, retirement. No, I think, uh, I think like you mentioned, that skid that Hawk Cross has been on, I think one of the things that will play into this fight that a lot of people won't mention is pressure. Like, I think Bobby Green will be going in with very little pressure because what does he have to lose? He's fighting an up-and-comer. You know, maybe his next fight will be in the top 15. But like I said, he's not challenging for a title anytime soon. So what does Bobby Green have to lose? If Hack Press goes in there and shits a brick again, you know, we're not talking about him losing his spot on the roster yet, but we are talking about him going significantly further down the card. And we're certainly not talking about him in that classic contenders that's coming up in the bottom of the top 15 at 155. I absolutely couldn't agree with you more. I think he has the most to lose out of this. Bobby Green, we know what Bobby Green is. He's an exciting fighter. I'm super excited that he's on the main card because I'm going to be there. But at the same point, Bobby Green loves to fight, and that's the only thing that matters. If you're going to put on a show, that's all Uncle Dana cares about. Look, and before we get to the odds, that is one thing we can't agree on. These two guys are going to put on a show. I think this is going to be a great fight. I think that's the theme of the whole main card, honestly. And that's not just me saying it because I'm going. Let's take take a look. Take us over to the odds, Gage. All right. Look that up, Jamie. Look that up, Jamie. <laughs> All right. We have Bobby Green coming in as a favorite at minus 135. The odds makers see it the same way I do. On their hand, other hand, we got Nazara Hakperist coming at plus 140. The dog. Um Zach, I mean, I'm taking it. I'm taking money line Bobby Green just because I think he's going to take it. I think he's going to win decision. I'm not. I'm not real sure how he's going to win, but I'm taking money line Bobby Green here. I think that's a pretty safe bet for the, the favorite money. Yeah, I agree. I, I like my plus money for my underdog at plus one forty. You know, the fight goes to decision, just open-ended is something that I've been thinking about all week. And at minus 166, I'm not necessarily licking my chops, but that's that's definitely a prop bet we can play with and move around in certain parlays and stuff. Because at minus 166, that's, you know, you're, you're improving your odds in a parlay. And I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. You know, to that degree, Hack Press wins by decision is at plus 250. So maybe I'll put a little sprinkle there, but I'm not enticed enough to go with the unanimous or split decision here. I don't think it's worth the play when we have a lot more money to spend and disperse throughout this card. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's tough because I think they could both, I think that there's a really good chance of this not going all three rounds. Right. So Interesting. No, I, I mean, just from a volume standpoint, I think one guy can is probably going to get tired out. I don't know if it's going to be Bobby Green putting on Hackpress or Hackpress necessarily knocking out Bobby Green by catching him with one, you know, slick right or, or left hand. But winning inside the distance is looking a lot better to me than going to decision. And I think it's pretty plausible, especially plus – the return on either one plus 400 for Hawk Perist and plus 350 for Bobby Green. I mean, those are pretty damn good odds for a finish. Well, it's just funny because they totally reflect what you just said too about if it is inside the distance, it could go either way. There's not much difference between plus 350 and plus 400. That's true, unless you're a uh, pinch of pennies. 